The Nigerian Medical Association has announced the setting up of a three-member committee to investigate the shameful behavior exhibited by its members in Enugu State during the aborted election. While describing the action as public opprobrium brought on the noble profession of medicine in Nigeria, the association apologized to Nigerians and other nationals who may be disappointed at the behavior of some doctors during the Enugu State NMA elections. It told all the state branches of the NMA yet to conduct the elections to ensure that the values and, and uh, of course, the rights of all members were not eroded. The committee, chaired by a former president of the NMA, Professor Michael Girima, also had Agam Ayuk and Chris Yuguan, immediate past chairman of the NMA in Cross River State and Plateau State, as members. Joining us live is Dr. Edoga Chima, the chairman CMDA Esut Park Lane Inugu, and also Professor Chidi Odinkalu, a former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to start with... Uh, Good afternoon. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for joining us once again. I'm going to start with um, uh, Mr. Edoga. Some people have linked the violence at the NMA elections to the suspension of the incumbent chairman, Dr. Okwesili. Um, do, do you agree that this might, you know, be one and the same? Okay, thank you very much um, for having me. Um, I'm also glad to be here with Professor Chidi Odinkalu. I follow you a lot on the news. Um, that's a, an issue on its own, but the principal issue that you know led to you know some aggrieved members was disenfranchisement from voting in an election you know because of uh, um, the interests of the outgoing chairman to do his bidding you know to influence the outcome of the elections so that was the crux of the matter that led to breakdown in the election process when you say outgoing chairman, are you referring to the suspended um, um, doctor, uh, Okwesili? Yes, precisely. Okay. Dr. Ike Okwesili. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so what, what exactly, you know, would you describe as the biggest issues, aside like what you've me mentioned, the uh, disenfranchisement of some of those members? Were there other things that were, um, you know, creating all, you know, that, the, the issues in the NMA? Okay, um, the constitution of the Electoral Committee did not follow the laid down procedures in the bylaws governing the association. So that in itself was also faulty. Um, then the issue of uh, the, the disenfranchisement of members. So these, these were the two critical issues, you know, and uh, the, the police, you know, that were present at the venue of the of the elections, they evaluated the situation and called the returning officer that they envisaged that there may be breakdown in law and order if they continue to disenfranchise this particular subset of the association. And in the morning of the election, the commissioner for police actually requested for audience, okay, between the suspended chairman and the acting chairman. The acting chairman was there at the police station by the time 8 a.m. However, the suspended chairman, Dr. Ike Opasele, did not honor the invitation. He had to, you know, be taken from the election venue to the police station where the deputy commissioner for police, you know, uh, advised both parties to follow law and order and then advised Dr. Ike Opasele to ensure that nobody is disenfranchised. Okay, then, then would you be able to also share with us who, what body may have been responsible for the appearance of thugs at the election? Okay, okay um, contrary to the reports that uh, have been making the news on print media and social media, there were no thugs in, you know, on the election venue and there were no weapons you know, brought into the election venue. I want to paint a picture of what actually transpired because I was an eyewitness you know, from the beginning of the event to the end, there, there, there was police presence and there was also the presence of members of the DSS, Department of State Services. And they were at the gates. They were strategically positioned all through the Opera Square, which is also a public uh, venue. So it's, 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 it's very strange how talks can pass through, you know, the security at the gate, pass through all the levels of, of, uh, of, of, of security, 
and they stop the election and then ghosts got through without any arrests. So that report is actually false. And I want to categorically say that the report is false. There are no dogs and no weapons were brought into the election venue. So, so what you're saying is that the violence that was um, witnessed um, was, of course, carried out by doctors themselves and not, not thugs. Well, I wouldn't say that it was actually violence. What actually provoked the, 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 the crisis was when the, the outgoing chairman came dangerously close to the ballot box when some aggrieved members who were disenfranchised we are chanting that they should be allowed to exercise their franchise. So that triggered off the, the mayhem that made the tables, you know, that, that uh, had the valuable. I, I mean, why I'm asking is because, you know, there are video clips that show that there um, was obviously a, a, a crisis situation. There's also pictures of doctors that were seriously hurt um, and had blood all over them. Um, so would you say, you know, this was simply because some people came close to the chairman of the NMA? Okay, we seem to have lost um, um, Dr. Eduga there. Let's, let's now speak with, um, from the National Human, Human Rights um, uh, Council, uh, uh, Chidio Dinkalu. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, sir. Good afternoon again. Yeah. And uh, good afternoon, Dr. Eduga. Your perspective, of course, I, I, I would love to hear about this. Um, would you say that the problem lies with the people and not the systems? Um, if we are seeing an election that was simply meant to be amongst doctors turn into a situation like this? Um, well, I, I'm trying to think about this carefully uh, because what I'm hearing from Dr. Doga is actually much worse than, I think it's, it's actually, it would have been better to hear that thugs were at the venue. But to sit down here and hear that it is, to hear him categorically deny that thugs were at the venue um, makes me worry a lot more. Because the facts are also that there was violence, that there was bloodletting, some medical doctors actually lost blood. Uh, you see, we tend to associate doctors with blood and saving lives and the surgical theater or the labor ward where they're doing an episiotomy or something or delivering a child. Now, if doctors, for the sake of a contest amongst them, as to who would lead them in a local branch are letting blood. Something is fundamentally wrong with our formation processes. Doctors are the people who spend the longest time trying to acquire their qualification. And they do it because they want to save lives. And here we are over what is supposed to be a vocational election they are doing bloodletting and hiring police and hiring SSS. When we graduate students, we graduate them because they are fit in character more than learning. And when doctors, before doctors get into the vocation, they swear to the Hippocratic oath to save life. The question I therefore ask is, where is the medical and dental practitioner's disciplinary committee? Because as far as I'm concerned, this is such a fundamental thing to the nature of, of the vocation of medicine that people should lose their licenses for. If we don't get to the point where there are consequences for this kind of idiocy, because this is beyond idiocy. If we don't get to the point as a country where Medical doctors, all of them should feel sufficiently outraged that people should pay a price for this. We should shut down the damn country and let everybody go away. Interesting. Now, Dr. Odoga is back, so let's bring him in here. Um, you've listened to, of course, uh, 
uh, what uh, Professor Odinkalo has oh. said. Um, can you quickly respond to that? And then I also want you to you know, share with us what steps are being taken to restore hope in the NMA. Okay, thank you very much. I apologize for the break in transmission. Um, I would like to categorically say that what happened on August 6th, you know, in Enugu states, in the elect, regrettable and, you know, condemnable. But they were preventable and they were predictable too. Um, efforts were made to actually prevent this from happening. In the election, there was no bloodletting. You know, people were just there to insist that their rights are not disenfranchised. Where there was bloodletting was in another venue where um, one, of, one of those that, that, that got wounded, it was accidental. It was not like an inflicted injury on the doctor. Contrary to reports that um, are making rounds. So there were no altercations that led to you know, people having, ha having to lose blood at the election venue. You know, the police were there, the DSS were there. So where the bloodletting occurred was in a separate venue where the electoral committee chairman took the um, scattered ballot papers which he arranged to go and count something that is already invalid. In the process, the um, another group of doctors wanted to find out what was happening there. And then the injuries came, but the injuries were accidental. So I would like to also say that what happened, you know, was accidental and it was preventable. And right. the efforts that are being made by the national is highly welcome. We are expecting them to arrive any, any moment from now so that they can look into the immediate and the remote causes of this problem and also find a way to solve it and prevent it from ever happening again because it does not paint doctors in good light. Doctors are known to be responsible citizens and have a high level of professionalism. All right, I'm going to um, wrap up with um, Chidi Odinkalo now. Just uh, your quick thoughts on where um, we might be headed um, with regards to do or die elections in Nigeria. Um, uh, these are persons that you would also expect, you know, should be, um, I mean, painting a better example for what we expect in the future of Nigeria, of our country. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, you might say this is heartbreaking, but what do you think we should be looking forward to? after, you know, seeing Conse scenes like this? Consequences. Ruthless consequences. Look, I've spent 10 years um, within the legal profession conversing for us to reform our mechanisms and hold people accountable and begin to illustrate and remove people who think service to the vocation is life and death. Now, by the way, in 2014, um, the uh, ICANN elections were rigged. In 2016, Nigerian Bar Association elections were rigged. In 2018, Nigerian Bar Association elections were rigged. We've got to the point now where we're having people prosecuted in 2020 for having rigged the 2018 Nigerian Bar Association elections. And in 2020, NMA branch elections in Enugu drew blood. This tells you leadership in Nigeria is messed up. If we don't begin to have consequences, we will not get anywhere. At the Bar Association, we, have, we are prosecuting people. I challenge NMA to begin to prosecute people. No apologies will do. No public relations. That is the only way forward. Prosecute doctors for bringing all of us who have gone to school into disrepute. Period. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Of course, um, uh, Professor Chidi Odinkalu, I would love to speak with you again on this. And of course, Dr. Idoga, also, thank you very much.